Erev Tov, Chabri, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And uh, good evening to all of you that are there watching on live stream tonight. I uh, have a very interesting uh, situation here that I wanted to share with you. This is the, um, uh, of course, Pope Francis here uh, amidst the, yet again, another scandal uh, of the Vatican and their financial uh, affairs there. Of course, the man you're seeing on your screen now, him, uh, he's a Spanish, uh, so his older picture and his younger picture as well. And the young woman here who's a lay person, the one is a uh, uh, archbishop or there in the Vatican that was, uh, him and this lady here were actually put on a committee by the Vatican to be able to uh, look into um, things that were being done wrong in the Vatican as far as their funds. And it was a special commission that the Pope, Pope Francis actually set up uh, only to find out that they had leaked documents to the press. And uh, they were promptly both arrested. And the, the young lady here, I, can, I cannot pronounce either one of them's names. <laughs> but anyway, uh, she was actually released after she agreed to fully cooperate with the police, the Italian uh, Mansour. Uh, who's the gentleman here uh, pictured in the photo as well. Uh, he has not been released. He is, has been arrested, and uh, which only kind of made me really wonder about something. And so I did a little research here just to kind of get an idea of things. And that is, how does, how does the Vatican, being a quote-unquote church, get the power to arrest people? Well, this is one clear evidence that politics is what's involved. So those that think that they're just a church, so to speak, it clearly shows that they're not just a church. They have the power to arrest. They are a country within a country, as many people are already well aware of. And so therefore, these people here were arrested. It's not like a church maybe uh, in other parts of the world, uh, like the United States, where if someone does something wrong in their congregation, they can be turned over to the authorities for legal action, uh, where it's separation of church and state. In this case here, the Vatican is both church and state within itself. And these scandals that are going on have really proved to be a very serious situation for the Vatican, uh, something that they have not liked at all very well. Uh, let me take, I want to share with you something here, though. And this was a, a, a scriptural passage that really got my attention here. And, uh, and let me just take it to where uh, I hope you guys can see this as well. You probably can't. The print is very small there. But uh, let me just see if we can't pull this down. This is 1 Timothy 6.10 uh, is where I'm picking this up at here. It's to believed to be the words of Paul written by Timothy. And this is the famous scripture about the love of money. But let me explain something to you about it. Let's first look at verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Okay, the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Okay, but thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Now, this is what's fascinating about this. If you notice, it's not just the fact that the love of money is the root of all evil, but in this case here, it also says, which while some coveted after, like Judas, they have erred from the faith. Now, that's interesting. So the love of all, the, or the love of money being the root of all evil, and those that covet after it are those that were of the faith, are in the faith, even of today. And so it is clearly an identification of a religious system or persons or person uh, that is guilty of this. He doesn't even speak about it in a worldly context. That's what I found very interesting. He says, notice what he says here again. He says, we already know, we know, it's, we know the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some, 
Now that just is not just including Judas in this case. This has got a prophetic implication. Judas alone coveted the money and sold Yeshua out for 30 pieces of silver. That was obvious. One man. This is some. Some is more than one. They've coveted after. They have erred from the faith. So the ones that are doing the coveting after the money, which is the root of all evil, are those that are professing to be in the faith. Am I not right or not? Let's think about it. They have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. That's another very interesting prophetic insight when you think about it, because what did the love of money do when it came to Judas? It caused Yeshua to be pierced. In this case here, the love of money does the piercing to the individual. And of course, we know Judas went out and hung himself nonetheless. Now we see the Vatican. And of course, there's been many churches in the same type of scandals. But what's interesting about churches, though, uh, it's funny to even say it, about churches. Why is the Vatican exempt from all other church organizations? Church organizations in the United States, and I'm sure many of them overseas as well, uh, mostly are 501c corporations. We ourselves are not a 501c corporation, although we are an uh, institute of biblical research and a news broadcasting service. We have chosen to be fully above board and pay our own taxes. In fact, our tax uh, liability for uh, 2014 was about $3,500, something we've taken care of. So the point is, is we refuse to be a 501c corporation. Even though we are a ministry, we refuse to do it. We decided to pay our taxes on the funds that are given to us, to be straight up and above board. But those entities that are a 501c corporation, which in essence, you're actually owned by the state. You're really only an employee. Another reason why we've steered clear of that as well. We didn't want to be owned by the state, told what we can or cannot say. That's where John Hagee fell into the same problem recently. And even though I appreciate some of the great things John has done, I know that even at the Night to Honor Israel, I used to be a part of this, uh, this event as well with Brother Skogibo in, in Southwest Florida. He's the chairman there. And John recently, again, gave another $3.7 million to charities in Israel. And I thank God for that. But because of his 501c status, it has put him in an awkward position as well. So that when he did speak against the Vatican, the Vatican threw their weight around and put pressure on him. Now, any 501c corporation is also so, supposed to file a 990 form with the IRS in order to disclose what their financial status is and what their accountability is. That is, if you're a nonprofit organization, so that the public is able to see that you are just and above board. But why is it that the Vatican is above all these laws? The Vatican doesn't even pay taxes either, which of course not. They or like a 501c corporation, but in their case, they answer to no one. And only when someone finds out a little bit of information that leaks out, that's when they finally get exposed a little bit. And the only reason then they try to do something about it is to squash and to crush any opposition that might hinder the millions and billions that are coming into the Vatican. I was recently sent an email how that that they reach out and, and they go to major churches for them to give to them as well. Not just the laity of all the different dioceses that they have worldwide, the largest uh, so-called Christian entity in the world. Now, nothing against the Catholic people. They have no idea what's going on. Now, let me just take you, though, to another article, a very interesting article here. It just came out moments ago, and, uh, and you can already see that the Vatican is trying to do damage control. Now, I say damage control because those that were doing the leaks of the information, by the way, also helped two books that are coming out this Thursday. The Vatican has threatened to sue the publisher if they release either one of the books. That lets you know that there's some serious scandalous information in there. But uh, anyway, these books are coming out this Thursday. The publisher has vowed to let it out regardless. They said they have a right to do so, and they've been reporting these things as truthful and they report it from reliable source information. Well, the Vatican knows that, so it's a problem for them. But they've already done some damage control. It says right here, exclusive, Vatican inspectors suspect key office was used for money laundering. Well, you might as well go ahead and confess now because uh, you, you, gotta get, you, gotta, you gotta have someone to throw under the bus, so to speak, and that's what Rome is doing. 
That, uh, and by the way, the video is no longer available. We're sorry, but the video you are trying to watch is no longer available. So we can't get to see the, the news clip about it. Someone got that off of there quickly. Anyway, though, the words are hard to kind of get out of the website once they get up there. Vatican financial investigators suspect the Department of the Holy See, which oversees real estate and investment, was used in the past for possible money laundering, insider trading, and marketing manipulation, according to a report seen by Reuters. The information in the confidential document, which covers the period from 2000 to 2011, has been passed on to Italian Swiss investigators for their, for their checks because some activity tied to the accounts allegedly took place in these countries, a senior Vatican source said. While most of the media focused on the Vatican's murky finances has for decades centered on its official bank, the Institute of Works of Religion, the IOR, a department called the Administration of the Patrimony of the Holy See, acted as its own financial powerhouse. Uh, APSA, a sort of general accounting office, manages the Vatican's real estate holdings in Rome, elsewhere in Italy, pays salaries of Vatican employees, and acts as a purchasing office and human resources department. Uh, but anyway, it goes on. One of, one of its two divisions also manages the Vatican's financial and stock portfolio. The 33-page uh, report suspects this division was, was used by an outsider for non-Vatican business, which possibly complicitly, complicitly of uh, APSA staff in violation of its own regulations. The internal investigation is part of a drive by Pope Francis to give Vatican financial authorities free reign to dig deep, overruling some cardinals who would prefer to forget the past now that the Vatican has enacted major reforms and instituted controls to thwart irregular practices. Under Francis, the Vatican, he says, has overhauled its scandal-plagued bank, given more power to its financial intelligence authority, appointed its first auditor general, and set up a new ministry to oversee economic activities of all departments which previously ran their budgets with little or no control. Well, it's quite clear that the Vatican's already done some damage control before the books come out and before any other articles can be released that would be damaging to, uh, and I'm not going to call them a Holy See because they're not a Holy See. Um, they're a hole, all right. Uh, a, a pit hole is what they are. So if you want to throw your money into a pit hole, it's a good place you can throw it at. Uh, it'll go right into a hole, right down straight to hell, in fact. Anyway, though, uh, Nonetheless, though, it really concerned me, especially in light of the passage here in Timothy, the root of all evil, another sign of who the trouble child, we might say, is, and that is Rome. So many different passages have been pointing to who the Vatican really is, as we brought out to you not long ago about Revelation chapter 13. They are that beast right there that will blaspheme God's name. And now we find out Timothy gives us another inside look of now, he doesn't actually say the Antichrist, but he lets you know these are the ones that have erred from the faith, the ones that have coveted that money. And I'm sure we have a lot of individual people as well, because it says some have erred from the faith. But clearly, Rome itself is in the spotlight once again. I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live. A lot of things going on in Israel. Uh, we'll be trying to bring you up to date on that tomorrow evening, going through a recap. Uh, there's been a... a a, a little pushback on some of the intifada, a little lull, we might say there. There's still, though, there's been uh, thus far, let me just count it, I believe it's 29 Israelis have been um, wounded or killed during this, this intifada. And, uh, and, and a, a number, uh, quite a number, about double the number as far as Palestinians that have been either wounded or killed by the Israelis in retaliation. Uh, of course, we know that Mahmoud Abbas has taken his uh, his case to the uh, ICC, the International Criminal Court, uh, accusing Israel now, by the way, he's actually now accusing Israel of, uh, of actually um, starting a, um, uh, what do you call it? I mean, I think I can pull that for you real quick here. It's really, really concerning here. Uh, oh my gosh. Well, this, speaking of news, we just got another one here. I didn't even see this one here because it just came up on here. Let's take a quick look at this here. The, the headline here is saying that uh, there is a report. Hang on. we got to back it up before that little ad jumps into there. Uh, report Muslim attempts to murder Israeli on a flight to Ethiopia. Um, let's see what it says here. An Israeli man was violently attacked by a Sudanese national aboard an Ethiopian Airlines flight to the uh, Adas Abab last week. In an incident last Thursday, the Muslim attacker reportedly took a metal tray 
grabbed the Jewish victim's head and hit him repeatedly while shouting death to the Jews. The Israeli foreign ministry told Arush Shiva that the Ethiopian police arrested the attacker as soon as the plane landed and have extended him, uh, excuse me, and extended him remand in custody. Uh, Ethiopian officials are keeping their Israeli counterparts regularly updated on the progress of the investigation the ministry added. Uh, but anyway, going back, let's quickly go back here. We have, um, I'd like to try to find this article again real quick here. There's been a couple of people that have been arrested. They, they, were, they were apprehended with weapons, including a 15-year-old and a 17-year-old. That was another interesting uh, thing that had came up as well. Um, but the one that I was most concerned about, though, was uh, Abbas and what he is actually accusing Israel of. Uh, assassinations, that's what it was. I do remember that now. I don't see the article right up here to where I can grab it for you. But he's actually taken to the uh, uh, ICC International Criminal Court and is accusing Israel of, uh, of actually um, assassinating Palestinians. Uh, and I don't see how in the world anyone could, could say this is an assassination when clearly they're dealing with murderous people that are, that are actually suicide murderers at that. Anyway, hope to do a special report as well in the very near future. Uh, another thing that's concerning me as well, and I'm hoping that the Israeli uh, military, the Israeli uh, 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 politicians as well will take a look at this particular news broadcast because we are very concerned that the Israeli soldiers that are in training are unarmed. And it is an open target and really a very sad situation. The Israeli government should arm all soldiers in uniform, even if they are in training because with an intifada going on, this is not a good time to be in uniform and not be armed as well. How can you defend the public when you're in uniform and people are expecting you to save their life when you have nothing to be helping the public with? I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live. Shalom, good day, and hope to see you again tomorrow night. Uh, normally 3.30 p.m. Eastern time uh, for you guys there. We were a little bit late this evening coming on. We was trying to pick up a few other things there before we came in. Uh, so we should be back on time tomorrow night. Sure.